demise of Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkaiseri. News reaching a newsrooms this morning that the late Interior Cabinet Secretary succumbed at the Karen Hospital where he was rushed for a medical checkup. The country is reeling from this sudden demise of the Interior CS coming just 30 days to the general election. Joseph Nkaiseri was last seen on Friday, which is yesterday, at the Saba Saba prayers where he accompanied President Uhuru Kenyatta, his colleagues and friends saying he was well alive and fine. A lot of questions as to what could have led, into, uh, led to his demise. In just a few moments, we are waiting for a statement from a State House. President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to address the nation. Uh, many, of course, having a lot of questions as to what is going to happen to the country um, ahead of the August 8th general elections. We'll be bringing you that uh, press briefing by President Uhuru Kenyatta from State House in just a few short moments. But here in studio, I have have a panel of guests who will be putting more context into the happenings of the day. Security expert Delando Kilu, we have a lawyer Ndegwanjiru, and a political analyst Mohamed Abdullahi. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining us Thank on you. KTN News. Um, let's come to you, Delano, as a security expert. How would you rate or assess uh, Nkaiseri's uh, performance in his tenure? First of all, we'd like to offer our condolences as Protective and Safety Association of Kenya, which is the body that comprises of all security professionals mm -hmm. in this country, from the military to the National Police Service to private security. And we want to express our condolences to the family, to the friends of the late Major General in Kayseri. And as a nation, we mourn. We mourn a fallen warrior. We mourn a person who made an impact. We mourn a man who was not afraid of death, but on this very sad occasion, uh, death came calling. Mm -hmm. He was a stalwart man. He was a very decisive leader. And it is indeed very sad to lose somebody as high-profiled as Major General Nkaiseri. However, in terms of his performance, we, from a security professionals community, are satisfied with his performance. He did well. In his final act, he was found in the public to be in prayer, which I believe is significant of the direction which he was going. Mm -hmm. And may his soul rest in peace. But in terms of his career, he had a sterling career. He was a personal friend of mine. We actually did a lot of things together. And I recall yesterday, as recent as yesterday afternoon, I was actually trying to raise him on the phone and I was unable to get him mm -hmm. uh, on the telephone, and I was hoping to be able to speak with him today. Unfortunately, he is in a better place as we now speak. Uh, from a national perspective, General Nkaiseri did something that no other interior minister has been able to do, which he was, he was able to unify the various security agencies cohesively under one command. Mm -hmm. And from a security perspective globally, you understand we have a major global threat in form of terror, in form of internal criminal activity, violence, you've seen gangs, etc. He ran his helm very honorably. I would say he's a man of honor. Another thing that comes out very clearly is he loved training. Mm -hmm. And you will see that uh, the, not just the National Police Service, but security across the country, training became a very key and core part of the play in terms of security. Mm -hmm. He improved all communication, he was able to equip the security divisions of this nation adequately, and there's a lot of ongoing work that is going on. One thing I do want to assure every Kenyan from every single walk of life is that there are contingencies that were put in place in case of such an eventuality, as is the security community takes life and death very seriously. Mm -hmm. And we already had worked out on all contingencies with regards to the upcoming general elections. And in the case of a loss of a very senior leader and a commander in the form of our uh, late Major General Nkaiseri. Joseph Nkaiseri. So, um, and that is a question many are asking, Delano. What next? What next is, of course, all contingency plans will be uh, executed. I'm not at liberty to share those with you. Mm -hmm. And we will be receiving in the next couple of minutes a statement from the head of state, which will bring more light into the matter. Mm -hmm. But uh, at every single level of government, there are contingencies that are always put in place in case of such. It will continue to be uh, business as usual, mm -hmm. going up and leading up to the general elections. Nothing changes. The security plans do not change. 
uh, and every single aspect of the security operations of this country will run smoothly and will run flawlessly. All right. Um, and I will come back to you, especially um, what the country will be expecting for the ne next 30 days and even after the elections. But, Mohammed, your thoughts on the sudden demise of Joseph and Kayseri and his tenure as Interior Cabinet Secretary? Thank you very much. I do share sentiments which have been expressed by my co-panelists here. Um, Kasseri, I had only a few occasions where I met him. Mm -hmm. And in the few occasions that I met him, I was extremely impressed by him, uh, both as an efficient servant of this country, uh, which has been said by several people we have heard in your broadcast now. But he put one thing which I first I would like to pass also, convey my condolences to the family, to his colleagues uh, in the ministry, as well as the people of Kajiado and the government that he served, including the president. He will be a very difficult act to follow. That's what I know. I was in the civil service before. His mien, his politeness, his understanding and his efficiency in the few occasions that I met him were quite impressive mm -hmm. to my mind. Um, he, had, he was a man who had his head screwed on, as the English say. He knew what he was doing and he was efficient. If he decided a course of action, then he went there in precision as a military commander. Now, he combined qualities which are very rare to be found in any one person. He was a soldier in the docket that he is, to fill the docket he is. Mm -hmm. He was a politician, that he was a member of parliament. Therefore, he knew the, what happens in the political circles and how to manage the politicians. And later on, he became the minister. Mm -hmm. So as a man, actually, what impressed me very you know, what really impressed me about in Kayseri, mm -hmm. whenever I had the occasion to meet him, and I was in a group including a senator and some of his friends. He, and he was dealing with a security issue. I found him to be extremely polite to the fault. He was ready to serve. And I think the other thing which I think is quite important is that <laughs> I have been around for a long time, from the 60s. Mm -hmm. And I have been in the media all the time. And you had this situation where you had the internal security docket, the person who handles it did not put a human face to it. Mm -hmm. You had this very rough face, uh, security, threats, uh, not bringing a simple a right. smile to uh, the Mohammed, people. I had to interrupt you. I'll come back Sorry. to you in just a moment. We'll have to cross over to the Lee Funeral Home. Um, a host of uh, leaders and politicians there, uh, of course, are expressing their condolences to the family of the late Joseph and Kayseri. Let's listen in to Ole Kiapi. The government as a cabinet secretary. So really, I think all leaders must call for peace. All of us, the citizens.